Montanita, Ecuador is a small coastal town that is popular with surfers and also local tourists from Ecuador. I noticed quite a few families coming there for the weekend. And to get there from Guayaquil, um, in Guayaquil you have an airport that's located right in town and next to it is a huge uh, bus station. It's kind of it's interesting because it's a bus station slash shopping mall. Uh, so you go up on the, I think it was like the second or third floor, buy a ticket, and there's buses going to everywhere in Ecuador, everywhere. Uh, I took a bus to Montanita, and the, it, the bus trip was about two and a half hours. Cost was $6.75. And you may not know, but um, the U.S. dollar is used in Ecuador. So if you're from the United States, you don't have to change your currency. You just take your U.S. money down there. Hola a todos. En este video estoy en Montanita. Montanita es un pueblo uh, ubicado en la costa de Ecuador. Montanita es un destino turístico que es popular con los surfistas, uh, particularmente los surfistas de, desde los Estados Unidos y otros países. Y también es popular con uh, mochileros, mochileros jóvenes de Europa y también con familias ecuadorianas que van a Martinito uh, para el fin de semana. He notado que hay muchos perros en Martinito, en las calles, en la playa, en cualquier lugar. In Montanita, you'll see many dogs running free on the beaches and the streets. And another thing you'll notice is the town has a influence from the late 60s. I believe, um, I believe it became popular in the late 60s with hippies from the USA, and you still see that influence today. Vamos a caminar a, a la playa. So who goes to Montanita? Well, when I was there, I noticed quite a few backpackers, young backpackers, many from Europe. Uh, countries such as Germany, Switzerland, and Holland. I didn't notice many Americans there and not many people from the United States or Canada. Um, and also you get a lot of families, Ecuadorian families that come from other cities, uh, mainly to stay for the weekend. <laughs> Este video fue filmado un sábado y normalmente los fines de semana había muchas personas en, la, en las playas, en los restaurantes, etc. Pero durante la semana um, no había muchas personas, uh, fue bastante tranquilo. I noticed my, during my two weeks there that during the week probably from Monday till let's say late Thursday. It was pretty peaceful there. There wasn't too many people in town, not many locals, uh, local families visiting. But starting around Friday till 
Sunday midday. The place was full of people on the beach and restaurants. The nightlife here is was quite incredible. Um, disco staying open until five, six, seven in the morning. Me gustaba la playa aquí. No había muchos uh, vendedores en las playas como en otros destinos turísticos. Hay otros lugares, uh, otros uh, playas con demasiados vendedores que um, es, están tratando de vender algo cada dos minutos. One thing I like about Martinita is, for example, on the beach, there's people walking by selling stuff, but they weren't aggressive about it. They would just call out announcing what they're selling. For example, agua means water. And uh, there's a lot of places in the world, a lot of beaches in the world, where you just have so many vendors coming up to you every one or two minutes trying to sell you something. I remember in Africa, in Grand Bassam, um, Ivory Coast, I was in Ivory Coast for a month. And as soon as you got on the beach, three or four people would just attach themselves to you and would not leave you alone, not even for a second. If you're interested in learning Spanish while you are in Ecuador, there in Montanita there's two Spanish schools. One is called the Montanita Spanish School. You can see signs for it actually uh, overhanging the road near the uh, bus station. And there they, they offer group and private classes. They also have surf lessons and uh, they have uh, quite a few outings uh, around town. Like, for example, there's one outing to a play pool on a Friday night. And that's a, if you want to meet some other people who are other travelers, it's a great way to do that. Um, I know one person who was there who for one month uh, took six hours a day of private Spanish lessons. So. It can be pretty intense. I think most of the classes are at least two, two to four hours a day. Muy cerca de Montanita hay una otra ciudad que se llama Alon. Y Alon es, uh, es como Montanita, pero hay menos turistas. Hay, hay una comunidad de, de extranjeros. Hay, um, parece mucho más uh, tranquila de, de Montanita. Dos veces en un restaurante italiano, dos veces en un restaurante ecuadoriano que se llama Tiburón y um, come risotto vegetales. Y, um, otros días uh, come en un, um, un restaurante que ofrece uh, pollo con patacones y arroz y papas fritas, etc. Machinita has many, many restaurants of different types. Uh, for example, I ate a couple times at an Italian restaurant, which is a little bit pricey, but the food is great. Um, I ate at a local restaurant, which was kind of interesting, called Tiburon, which means shark in uh, Spanish. And they had it's Thai Thailand food as well as uh, local food. And I had uh, risotto, vegetable risotto a couple times there. It was absolutely amazing. Actually, somebody um, somebody there recommended it, it to me. It's kind of hard to find because it's on the second floor, and it's 
kind of a hidden restaurant. And, and other days I just had chicken, um, french fries, rice, and they have something there called patacones, which is kind of like plantain. And it's quite delicious. During my stay in Montanita, I stayed in two separate hotels. The first four or five days, I stayed in a hotel called Hotel, I'm sorry, it was called uh, Casa Roja, and it was located about, oh, I don't know, maybe 500 meters or so from downtown, and it was very quiet there, very peaceful. There was a couple dogs living there that always greeted me when I came in the front gate, and during my five days there, I was the only guest. I think there's maybe six or seven rooms, and I was the only one there. Uh, and then I switched to a place called Cabanas, which is located near the, um, near the, I guess you'd call it a river, a stream or river that we passed earlier in the video. And, um, it cost $25 a night. Uh, my first place cost $30 a night. And, um, Cabanas was pretty nice at it. They had a swimming pool, but it's very loud there. There, it was next to, uh, um, a hostel that was that would sometimes play music till five, six o'clock in the morning. It was incredible. And there's also a bit of, there were some mosquitoes there. In my first place, I didn't have any problems with mosquitoes, but in the second place, there was definitely a problem. Around five or six o'clock at night, the mosquitoes would come out. Durante mi estadía en Matinita, mi aloje en dos hoteles diferentes. El primer hotel se llama Casa Roja y está ubicada tal vez 500 metros del centro. El 
El segundo hotel es uh, el Hotel Puede Ver al inicio de este video y costó 25 dólares uh, cada noche. Uh, uh, Casa Roja costó 30, 30 dólares cada noche. Los dos hoteles eran muy diferentes. Uh, Casa Roja era muy, muy, muy uh, tranquilo, pero uh, Cabañas era muy, muy ruidoso uh, durante las noches. Another thing I liked about Montanita and Ecuador in general is um, the people are pretty honest. Uh, I didn't have a lot of people trying to rip me off all the time. Taxi drivers and many tourist destinations always try and double or triple the price for tourists. But in Ecuador, the, there's many yellow taxis all over town and they charge reasonable prices according to people I talk to, local people. And uh, the souvenir shops you see in this video, um, the prices for t-shirts and things like that seem quite reasonable. I think it was like $8 for a t-shirt, tie-dye t-shirt with Montanita Ecuador on it, uh, which seemed quite reasonable to me. Right around the corner from Montanita, there is another a little beach town. It's called Alone. And Alone is kind of like uh, Montanita light. Uh, there is uh, a community of expats there. It's much quieter. The beaches are nice also. I think it's a little bit more expensive, uh, a little bit more uh, upscale than Montanita. And it's very close. It's probably a one or two dollar taxi ride um, from Montanita. So if you want to take it, check it out one day, very simple to do so. <laughs> Esa negra, negrita. Cero nueve seis tres nueve siete ocho tres tres ocho para todo tipo de eventos. Cumpleaños, matrimonios, bautizos, despedidas solteras, reuniones familiares, bautizos, entierros y divorcios. Así que si está, usted tiene que ir a estar divorciado. Así que si se está divorciando, ya no hay que llamar, no podemos arreglar. The street we're walking up now is called Cocktail Alley and during the nighttime, right now it looks dead, but during the nighttime you'll see many, many people, families and uh, tourists drinking uh, on the streets here. And here you, around this area you also see a couple of uh, discotheques. One of them is called uh, the Lost Beach Club and I believe it was voted one of the 100 best discos in the world. Uh, I, I never went there, but um, some people uh, I talked to who went there said it had the be best sound system they've ever heard in their life. Matinita tiene un vida 
Nocturna increíble. Hay una, una discoteca cerca de aquí que se llama The Lost Beach Club y um, fue votado um, uno de los, los mejores uh, discotecas en el mundo. We're now entering the Montanita bus station. This is where you get off when you take a bus from Guayaquil. And this is where you catch the bus to Guayaquil. All you have to do is go to the um, counter here and buy a ticket to Guayaquil. They have buses leaving almost every hour. And it's very simple, just buy a ticket and show up 15 minutes before the bus leaves and you're good to go.